Not quite fat, not quite thin, but still a collection highlight. Hello everyone, MMC fan here and welcome to another Marvel Movie Collection figurine review. Today we're taking a look back at one of the more popular and hard to find issues of the collection which is issue 106, Thor. So the character is Thor in his final battle look from Avengers Endgame, it's issue 106. It released on the 25th of June 2020 originally, it's in 116 scale, 13.6 centimeters tall and weighs 144 grams. And the price when it originally came out was $13.99 and it comes with the usual 16 page magazine. In terms of availability, this one is tough to find. Its first batch on the website sold out within an hour or so. It didn't make it to many news agents due to COVID and it's only had one small restock since then. It's also no longer sold at Forbidden Planet and there are currently no plans to bring it to HMV. So I'm saying that this one is definitely hard to find. Here's the release pattern, pause the video to see if it's available in your territory. HMV recently confirmed that they're going for Dark World Thor and in the US the heavyweights line is getting Infinity War Thor so this particular version isn't hugely widespread right now. So here he is on the turntable and I gotta say it's one of the most awesome figures in the collection. There's actually a few things wrong with it in my opinion which I'll mention but this still doesn't stop it from being an awesome figure. Let's start with the pose. They've gone for this iconic shot from the film where he dual wields both Stormbreaker and Mjolnir and it's come out brilliantly. Stormbreaker is also massively improved in terms of its design, its colour and its size since it last appeared in issue 95. It goes to show what a difference it makes to actually see something on screen rather than rely solely on concept art. Mjolnir is also much more accurate than issue 4 in terms of no weird dimples and better detail and better shaping but they did cheap out and leave off the strap which is disappointing in my eyes because there's really no reason to do that and if you put them next to each other one has a strap and one doesn't and you know which one's accurate it's the one with the strap so that's really disappointing but on the whole the weapons do look better. But the strap is not the only problem with the sculpt he just isn't fat enough. He just looks like a slightly less muscular version of his regular self when he should have a massive beer belly. His arms and legs are still regular Thor as well. I, I guess they knew he'd be fat in the film, but evidently when the figure was developed, the film hadn't released, so they didn't know just how big. Fortunately, because of the cape, unless you actually get really close to it, you can't really tell that he's thinner because it's all the same color. It's all one block color. So that's why it's not a terrible figure as a result. It's still very, very good. But if you actually look closely, just hasn't eaten enough this one. The rest of the sculpt though, it's good. Uh, what little likeness that can be seen is decent and the detail on the hair and the beard is definitely a highlight for me as well. Plus the outfit looks good, the cape is great. Even if his belly had been downsized, you do still get a ton of resin in that cape. So it's good value for money. Quite amusingly, this was the last figure to be $13.99 before issue 107, Janet Van Dyne bumped the price up to $14.99. Considering her figure was downright tiny and one of the least impressive ones in the entire collection, they really screwed that up. If this Thor had marked the price increase, people may have been more lenient to do it, but it was weird to receive a delivery where this one was $13.99 and a tiny one with no likeness and the downright rubbish was $14.99. That clearly the departments at Eagle Moss do not talk to one another. Paintwork is pretty good. Maybe a little more flesh tone bleed onto the hairline than I'd have liked, but otherwise it's been painted well. I like that the circles on the suit, they have a glossier finish than the rest of it, and that offers some texture to what would otherwise be a, a one color outfit. One change I'd have made though to the sculpt is the cape, is to have it flapping around his leg a bit, like they did with issue 4 Thor and issue 70 Loki. Because if you display it from the front, which I'm sure everyone will, you can't see any of that awesome red color. Obviously that comes down to the cape design from the film, but a quick flick at the end round his leg a little bit more than it currently does uh, would have solved that nicely. Scale is great, he comes in as one of the tallest regular issues, and despite the issues I've mentioned, still makes for an absolutely epic figure on the whole. Here he is alongside the two most recent Thors in the collection. The Thor figures consistently come out really well compared to some of the characters that they repeat quite often. And here he is with Cap and Iron Man from the same scene. There are very clear scale discrepancies between Cap and Thor, which is emphasized even further by the fact that the hammers, which are the same ruddy hammer, um, are different sizes. But that's an issue with Cap being a little bit too small rather than one with Thor. These three still look stunning together at any rate. So the takeaway, 
3.5 out of 5 for the character choice. It's a good choice of pose and a variant that everyone wanted, but they neglected to make him as fat as he needed to be or to give Mjolnir that strap. The likeness gets a 4. What we have got is sculpted well, and that likeness is fair. 5 out of 5 for the scale. Absolutely perfect. No problems there. Paintwork, 4.5. There's very little to nitpick on, just a little bit of bleed around the face. Overall look, got to be a 5. Despite all of the above, it is a great figure. And I'm going to introduce value as another category. For this one, it's an absolute 5. All in all, if you don't have this one already, it should be top of your priority list as it's Thor from the most epic superhero battle in cinema history. A tricky one to place in terms of my ranking, I feel if it had been fatter and the red of the cape was more visible, it'd probably be number one, but it lands at number three for now. As always, thank you for watching. You can get all the latest Marvel Movie Collection news by following me on Instagram, Facebook, subscribing right here on YouTube, and joining the discussion in the Facebook group too. My next review will be out very soon. No strings attached. Keep on collecting. <laughs>